Hey, it's Nigga here. So, uh, I just got back from uh, Shasta Car Club track for, uh, from a Supermoto USA event. So, it's been, boy, it's been almost a year since, uh, since we did any kind of Supermoto racing. So, so what happened was uh, COVID-19 happened. So, that's um, pretty much uh, the last race that I did was the, uh, was the Lazy Bum Hair Scramble. And I did it on this bike, okay? Because uh, this bike wasn't ready to race yet, um, and uh, and then and then and then the pandemic happened and everything went under lockdown, and they couldn't have any more racing events, no no gatherings and stuff like that. So, so that's why uh, that's why we haven't had the race because uh, I think they were going to have a uh, there was going to be a Supermoto USA event at Button Willow, and then it got canceled because of the pandemic. And then fast forward to now, September, like mid-September, um, uh, it was September, 9th, uh, September 18 to 20, 2020, okay? So that's when I'm shooting this, uh, this, that's for the event I'm shooting for this video. And uh, the, first, uh, the first round, I guess, of, uh, or the first Supermoto USA event of 2020 was in uh, Redding, California at Chasta Car Club. And... Um, and I, I had been, I went to the event last year at uh, Mount the Shasta Cart Club in Reading, and um, and I had a whole lot of fun. There's nowhere else that I know of that you can practice or you can race on the asphalt and the dirt at the same time. You know, it's it's the real deal supermoto. You know, um, I mean, I know in like other countries, like in Europe, supermoto is like really big, and they have like these crazy supermoto tracks, like like rallycross and stuff. But uh, but we don't got any of that stuff. Unfortunately, at least at least not around me. <laughs> so uh, so yeah. So I wanted to come back. Um, it's been it's been about about seven months since the last time I went racing. Okay, okay. If you unless you count the drag racing that, uh, um, but like anything other than drag racing, it's been like seven months. So it's been a long time. Um, in that time, I think we did we did two track days with these two bikes. Okay. And one, one of the, no, both of the track days. So but one of the first track day was when it was cold. And um, that was before the pandemic happened. And we did it on, we did it uh, with this bike. This bike had the BSC 2000 and the stock battery. Yeah, it had the stock battery on it. And, uh, and I didn't have the regen throttle yet. So I was like backing it into like every corner, you know, it was crazy. So yeah, so uh, I have, I've, I've only done like two track days on this bike, on these bikes this year and I never got a chance to take this bike out to the track when I after I installed the BSC 4000 so so yeah so that's let's start there so we made it to this is this is the after action review for for that race okay so I'm not gonna do the play-by-play -play for every race you know I'll, I'll kind of make tell you some highlights and stuff and then because uh, I can't I can't remember but, uh, but I did the I did the play-by-play -play after each race so there'll be like an after race vlog after each race okay so um this is the first time i've ever raced four whole races a weekend so if in in one supermoto usa weekend okay so so like uh i was really tired after i left so and and so the weather was we've got all these wildfires going on in california and everything is on fire and there's smoke all over the place so he's me was like i didn't i didn't I, I was kind of like 50-50 like whether I was going to go or not because I was like Hayes Mega is sort of sensitive to the smoke and stuff so it's like, I get, I've get i been like sick because of the smoke you know and I've been unwell is what I'm going to say okay um, so but I decided to come out the weather was great here when I left and then when I got there definitely uh, when you got to around Willows the smoke was like so bad uh, because the Mendocino National Forest is near Willows okay and that smoke was like going that way. If you guys don't know where Willows is, that's where Thunder Hill Raceway is. Okay, um, and then uh, and then if you went a little bit farther north to Reading, it cleared up a little bit. Okay, so it was still kind of smoky, but it wasn't too bad. You could still see the ash kind of floating around and stuff. So, um, so the the weather was like it was like 80s, 90s the first two days. Okay, the first day was a was a practice day for me. They had a they had a supermoto school on the first day and in the practice. So um, basically uh, during the school, I used that time to travel 
to up there because um, Reading is like it's like two hundred miles from my place. Yeah, it's it's a it's kind of a long drive. Uh, I I don't like doing the long drive, but it uh it was it's definitely worth it to race at this track. This track is very very nice. It's it's nice because it has a dirt section. <laughs> okay, um, so it was uh it was pretty awesome. Um, and uh, and then on the the first two days there wasn't like any breeze or anything. It, it was killing me, man. The it was just so it would be so hot by by around noon. It would be so hot already. Um, the good thing is the camping wasn't too bad. The camping wasn't cold. So that's uh, the the worst thing Hades Mega hates at night is waking up in the middle of the night and it's freezing and I gotta go pee. So so like really if I had to go pee in the middle of the night it was not. It was not freezing so it was great the weather the sleeping weather was great but once it got past like 10 or 11 o'clock oh man you, you could feel it you're sweating buckets and i'm wearing leathers and stuff um he's making us thinking like maybe i should wear dirt biking gear <laughs> i'm thinking of i'm thinking of buying like a full like um armored like upper suit and then i would wear like a you know dirt bike pants and with like armor underneath and stuff so the pan the only problem is like the pants will get tore up if I ever crash, you know. Um, which which did happen at the track, okay? So I was there for practice the first uh, on the first day and uh, yeah, I paid to do the practice. So first thing yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember which bike I went out with, but definitely when I went out on the KLX, I uh, I tucked the front end down and I high sided the bike. <laughs> it was bad, dude. I was like, oh my god! Literally, I had just got on the track. I in like two turns, boom! I was down already. It's kind of similar to what happened on this bike when I had the stock tires on it. Those things are really slippery. Um, those tires, uh, but but so what happened was I spooned on this Bridgestone uh, Batlax S20 Evo tire. Okay, it's like a hyper bike tire. It's it's a very good sticky soft tire, um, and and I got it really cheap. I got it for like a hundred bucks. So because it it's very hard to find like a like a really sporty tire for a one ten size. Okay, so this uses like ninja size tires, and and so it was a brand spanking new tire. Okay, um, you can still see the nubs in the center. Like I cornered so hard, the nubs on the on the sides are almost gone. But the but the center nubs are are, are all still there, <laughs> so that that just gives you an idea, you know. Um, but but yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't scrubbed in. So uh, so second turn, I think I went to brake and then boom, the front tucked in and and I went down and, and it went it went down on this side and that's the first time this bike has been down on asphalt and dude, it sucks, man. It it sucks whenever you you biff it on the asphalt. So I hit my knee really hard on the on the pavement when i went down um that my my racing suit i'll just show you it at some point in the video but uh it didn't protect me at all man <laughs> i guess it protect me from getting road rash i didn't really get any road rash but i hit my knee really hard here and i was like i was bruised the rest of the day it, it really sucked man like it hurts when i when i like you know tighten my tighten my leg or bend my knee so um, but I was okay. I just kept on going, you know, adrenaline and all that stuff. <laughs> so, so yeah, I went down pretty hard. So, and then the rest of the time I was just like, yeah, just take it really easy on this bike. Okay. I knew that. Um, also another thing I have never used, uh, so I never used this tire on that track. This tire is pretty good. It's definitely better than the tire that I had before. Um, uh, I have, uh, this guy, um, Tire warmer. So this is the very first time I use tire warmers. I wish I had them for the light B. Um, and and I do have a generator, so I can use these. So I have a 2000 watt generator. And and I found out you can charge the light B with the light light speed bikes charger and use these at the same time. If you turn this puppy down a little bit, if you turn it down to about four or five amps, and then you have these plugged in, it won't overload the generator. But anything higher than five amps, it will overload the generator. So. With that generator is like was working hard the whole weekend. I'm not gonna lie, and it's the first time Hayes Omega used tire warmers. And all I gotta say is like it gives you peace of mind that when you hit that track, you know your tires are warm. You can you can kind of get on it a little bit, you know. 
Um, and, but I still feel like after like after maybe like the third lap, then then it's really sticky, and then and then you can really lay into it still. So, but but like you don't have to worry about like oh you know it just like slides all of a sudden because it's not gripping. So, so yeah, I, man, I think I got some kind of poison oak, man. I'm like itching really bad now. Um, yeah, so that was some of the stuff I brought to the track. Um, I'll I'll talk about some improves later. So if you guys don't know what an AAR is, it's uh, it's an after action review and it's like what was supposed to happen, what really happened, and then what could we do to improve upon it. Okay, so I'm going over like what what happened pretty much. We kind of we already know what happened. We're gonna go we're gonna go do the supermoto race. Okay, uh, the the plan was to race. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Well, let's go over it right now. The plan was to race GPS B and GPC class on Saturday, and then race adult mini on Sunday, okay? So the the, uh, the Saturday races were all asphalt, okay? That means no dirt section. So if you had like a streety bike, that would be the one that you would want to race, you know? But everyone had like supermotos, man. Yeah, literally everyone had supermotos. Uh, we were gonna race this in GPB class because that's up to one 160 CC, okay? Um, and this is this is so KLX 140, but I have a 160, 166cc bore up kit in it. Okay, Te like technically it's a 160, man. It's a 166. You got an extra six cc's. You know, it, it doesn't really make much of a difference. I guess if you do round up, it's close enough where if you do round up, yeah, it's a, you can call it a KLX 170, which is what I call it. What that's what they call it in Asia. Okay, it's a KLX 170. They call they call the KLX 140 a KLX 150 in Asia. So they like they like to be optimistic about the the uh, the size of the, the engine <laughs> in Asia is what they say. In America, they're not not so optimistic about it. But, so that's why they went down to one forty instead. But uh, but yeah, it, it, in all in all fairness, I've already raced in, in a class similar to that. That I think they kind of changed it a little bit. But uh, but yeah, I mean really, I know this bike can keep up with a two thirty cc air cooled. Um, and, uh, it could keep up with it, but it doesn't have the torque to keep up with it, like, you know, out of corners, because they, they got more torque, um, 230 versus a 170, you know, it's still, it's still a big difference, um, but, uh, but it'll keep up at the top end, so definitely, if, if you can pull on them in the corners, you'll be able to pass them eventually with this bike, um, and, uh, yeah, so that's the reason why we raced GPB with this guy. Um, and this has been a little project of bike of mine for like almost two years now, okay? And it's become evident that it needs some work. So they will talk about that during improves, okay? <laughs> still like riding it. It still beats me up, okay? So, so yeah. So we're going to race this in GPB. That's the, the asphalt class up to 160cc. And, and I, think, I think it's fair. It's fair. Um, it's only six extra cc's. I don't think that's cheating. But before it was only 150 cc, so, so so like yeah, then it would have been like 16 cc. So like, well, whatever, dude. It's not like they're they're. It's not like they're gonna know I have a bore up kit on it anyway. So they don't really do like a comprehensive uh, tech inspection on. Oh, that doesn't look like a stock cylinder there. Because <laughs> technically, you can even get this even bigger than 160 166. Um, this has like the basic upgrade kit on it. Okay, and then we were gonna race. My new buddy here, the uh, the light B in GPC class. So GPC class is bikes up to one two five cc. So so I'm not gonna lie, Hayes Mega could have probably raced this bike in any class because there's no classifications for electric bikes in Supermoto USA yet. Okay, I'm not lying. Like like I raced an Alta with it one time, you know, and it was horrible. You know, they they don't have uh, they don't have classes with like kilowatt. Um, yeah, like kilowatt. Uh, how much kilowatt power you have, you know? They can't go by cc's because it's zero cc's, okay? Um, but they can probably go by voltage, how much power output. So this is, I have this set to 16,000 right now. I, I don't think I ever hit 16,000 at the track because um, I was checking. I was I got pretty close, okay? But uh, yeah, and then um, that would be the only way you can classify it or, or by weight maybe because it's really light, you know? But yeah, it's 125 pounds, so why not? You can race it in, against many. So that's what I did. I put it into GPC class. So I raced against 125cc bikes. So, um, 
Yeah, I think there was. Yeah. So so um okay so we'll talk about the first day of racing okay, um but yeah with the practice so yeah I went down during the practice and it scuffed up this handguard here so it did the handguards do work you know when your bike goes down it will slide on these I got a nice little flat spot on my my handguard here now battle scars man. I'll know, hey, that one, I got that from Shasta Car Club when I did scrub my tires improperly. <laughs> um, what Hayes Omega should have done is I should have, uh, when I put the new tire on, I should have rode it around the neighborhood for a little while um, to scrub the tire in, you know, um, just really easily, you know. Um, I thought, like, if I just went out on a track really easily, then, you know, I would be fine. But no, I hit the brake and down it went, you know, and, and it was bad. Um, like I said, I hit my knee. I think that was about it. Um, I did have to get off the track right away because the, the car overflows when you drop the bike. Um, one of the sliders got a little bit scratches. Um, the back slider, some scratches. Um, and, and then the foot peg got hit pretty good. Um, but uh, in the puck, it, it, I think it mostly s s uh, slided on the puck. So, so when they say you need to put these uh, foot peg sliders on, they work. They actually work, okay? They let your bike slide. Um, the, the reason you have these sliders on your bike is one, so your bike slides, you know, and it doesn't tear up the asphalt. And two is so uh, your bike does slide and it doesn't start yard sailing, okay? So, so, uh, so yeah, it, it, it worked. All the stuff that I made for the bike, it worked for, for doing the Supermoto stuff, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I've tested it on this bike and this bike, unfortunately, and they do work, okay? <laughs> that that low, the, the low dollar uh, slider stuff that Hayes Omega puts on, it, it works, okay? I, I, can, I can approve of it. <laughs> Hayes Omega spec, okay? Hayes Omega spec sliders. Okay, anyway, and then we did, did the practice on the Light B, and, and it was awesome, dude. Uh, it was the first time I rode the BSC 4000 on a track, and we were ripping it up, you know? Um... One thing is I, I don't like that regen throttle. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna ditch it. I'm gonna put the one that, the smaller one that I had before. I think I kind of like that one. This one it's just it's hard to press, you know, and you have to grip the bar a weird way. So that's it. I I'm not happy with it. Okay, it it works, but you know, it, for racing I I don't like it, especially when you're in dirt. Like you could accidentally you know move the bike. The bike might move a certain way, and you accidentally hit it when you're you know when you don't want to. The other one there's less chance of that happening. But but I used it the whole weekend and uh, and I did pretty damn good because you see, I got trophies on the bike. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, so yeah, I had actually put a new rotor on the bike too, and I was testing that out. Um, the bike is fast now. Okay, um, the there was no um, didn't get any times. Yeah, I didn't get times that day, so I couldn't tell how fast each one. I I could I can check. I brought my GPS with me. And I was checking to see how fast the bikes were going. And they were hitting about 57, 58 miles an hour. They were about the same speed. So I was like, wow, the Light B is about as fast as the KLX now. Um, so if you if you watched my last track day video, I had the BSC two, the overclocked BSC 2000 on the bike. And uh, and it was fast, but it's not as fast as the BSC 4000. So I, I never got a chance to really see a benchmark it against this bike with the BSC 4000. So, so if you guys remember, um, yeah, so the, uh, the overclocked, uh, BSC 2000, it was only like one or two seconds slower than this bike. Okay. Like this bike was just trailing right behind this bike. Well, it turns out like after I checked the track, uh, the track times with the transponder, um, the two bikes are literally the same times almost. Um, we were getting around, we were like, there's like three second gaps. Like sometimes Hades Mega would be a little faster, a little bit slower. I, the average times, well, I would say it was 103 and 104 on the, on the asphalt, I think. Um, yeah, 103, 104. And that's the same time for both bikes, okay? Um, so yeah, there was that. So uh, I did have another crash during practice with the KLX again, man. <laughs> um, I, I was just like, uh, I don't feel confident. I, I, honestly, I was almost ready to just say, hey, forget the KLX, let's just race the Light B the whole weekend. Okay, so, um, but it turns out, like, the next day, I got pretty comfortable riding it, and, and we did pretty damn good with this bike, okay? Um, this is just a different beast than this bike. You gotta ride it totally different. Um, and I'll go over the differences. 
So, so yeah, practice went okay. I felt pretty confident by the end of the day. I'm like last year, I was glad that I did the practice so I knew what was coming up for the race. And then this year, I'm glad I did the practice again because they they reversed the track. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what the heck to do anymore. <laughs> so, And it's been a year since I've been here. So, so yeah, um, I, it, it was great to get be able to practice before everybody else. You know, I'm pretty sure those people that just showed up, you know, they didn't really get that much. You get a little bit of practice in the morning and that's it. So, yeah, so in the morning, we went to practice. So that's when we put on the tire warmers. Uh, we put I put the tire warmers on the bike. I think I, I, think I did put it on for the practice. I don't remember. I remember... Uh, I had a hard time putting the tire warmers on this bike because this is like for like a, um, a super bike or something, you know? It's for a 120 front, but the rear is like, it's huge. And I'm using a 110 and a 120, so really I need two front front tire warmers instead of one. Um, instead of one front and rear. So I'm trying to look for another front tire warmer. But it worked. I got it to work. It just, it rubs on the chain a whole lot. It's a pain in the ass to put the rear in. That's what I want to say. But I got it to work, and, and after a while, I figured it out, okay? Um, and then we had it hooked up to the generator, and then, so we, I think I went out on both bikes. I went out on the KLX first, and then I came back, and then I, I did, I went, I hopped on the, the Light B, and then it turns out, uh, the, there was a practice session with, like, big bikes or something, and I'm like, hey, uh, why is there a lot of big bikes on the track? Uh, I'm on, I'm in the Light B, and <laughs> uh, there's bikes, like, passing me left and right, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think we're supposed to be on the track right now, so I went out. I'm like, oh, um, so I didn't get too much practice for that bike because um, I tried to I tried to use both bikes in that practice session. But yeah, practice went okay. Uh, not, uh, it was all asphalt, so it, you know I didn't really have any mishaps on the asphalt that day. Yeah, we had no crashes on the first day of racing. So so this is so I'm talking about Saturday now. Um, so so. We do the heat race, and, oh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to do the play-by-play, -play, man. But, anyway, for the heat race, I got first place. I think we did. We raced this bike first. Man, I don't remember which bike we raced. But, so, there, so before, so, so each class has two races. There's a heat race, and there's a main, main event is what they call it, okay? Um, the heat race is six laps, and the main event is eight laps, okay? Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I raced this one in GPC and GPP, like I mentioned earlier. Um, let's talk about GPC first. I think, I think that's the first one we raced. So, so in the heat race, uh, we, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, so, so last year they had a really long straight for the, uh, for the racetrack. And this year, they did not have a really long straight. They cut a, like a quarter of it off, so it wasn't as long as it was before. So I was like, oh, great. It's, it's, there's more turns now. So, so that's actually better for me because I have the smaller bike. So, so I had the 42 tooth sprocket on there. So it's, it's a, you know, hey, it's all about top speed setup. Um, so, so I was like, man, you know what? We should probably put the uh, the forty eight tooth sprocket in. So so that's what I did. That's what I did during the night before I went to sleep. Um, I I actually brought the chain and the sprocket with me and all the tools to change it in in the field. And I did it. I did it at the racetrack. So I swapped the 48, 42 for a forty eight tooth sprocket. And and the funny thing is when I went to go practice it with it the next day, I was like, holy crap! The bike is so much faster than it was yesterday. What happened? Uh, and I, I, I forgot. Oh, yeah, I changed the sprocket. That's why. The bike was like, it just felt really fast, you know. But I think I was, I might have been hitting more higher top speeds. I, I'm not sure the day before. So maybe I just wasn't warmed up yet, you know. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So, um, so also on Saturday, we had to rent transponders. So we have to have transponders from now on. So it was twenty dollars to rent it for the whole weekend, and it was totally worth. I didn't want to spend any more money because Hades Mega spent like a lot of money to go racing already. All these re uh, entrance fees to go racing is a is a lot, man. It adds up. Uh, plus, you gotta pay the gas to go there and everything. So, and then, then the food. I bought food there. I'm like, oh man, um, yeah, Hades Mega's burning a hole in his wallet racing. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to rent one for twenty bucks, and that's the first time. I use a transponder and it actually freaking worked. Okay, so 
So for during the refuel event, I rented a transponder and it didn't freaking work because I put it on the bike and, and I put it somewhere where it didn't work. And then so I wound up sticking it in my boot. So I knew from that experience, I put it in my boot. So that's what I did. That was the best thing to do because I rented only one transponder and you would have to, you have to, they want you to zip tie it to the fork leg. Okay. Um, but if I did that, I would have to zip tie it. And then when the next race comes and I have to use this bike, I have to take this off, put it on this bike. It's so freaking annoying. Um, so I just stuck it in my boot. So, um, the, the transponder goes with me. So I'm the only one that changes. I, the bikes change, but the rider doesn't change. So I got the transponder. So I don't have to worry about where the transponder is. It's just with me, you know? Um, yeah, and so my bike numbers are the same also. They're 277S. The reason I have 277S is because that's my District 36 racing number, okay? And I only got to use it once, and I don't think I'm going to get to use it for the rest of the year, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I set both bikes up with 277S, and so so my number was 277 that whole weekend. Um, but, like, I, I, I told them, it's like, yeah, I want, I have two bikes for practice, but you're, the only one bike is going to be out on the track at a time anyway, so, so it doesn't really matter, like, like, I think one of the Sonoma races, they told us, like, if you, oh, if you got two bikes, that's an extra 20 bucks, I'm like, really? Because it's not like I can have both bikes on the tracks at the same time, I can't, like, split my body, you know? <laughs> I can't do, uh, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, right? <laughs> um... That's a Naruto reference, by the way. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, the bike was like really fast during practice. I was like, whoa, holy crap, it was so much faster than it was before. Okay, and then so the GPC race comes up, and I'm racing this dude in a white suit, and he had like a one, he had a 125cc bike and a 140cc uh, bike. So I guess he raced the 140cc bike in the GPB class. And then, and then uh, it's kind of like how I have two different bikes, basically. So they, so there was a green one two five, and I think there were these Chinese, Chinese kind of little, little. Uh, they're like pit bikes, sort of, or like kind of like a Grom, I guess. And they had the twelve inch tires, um, for like supermoto and or for like you know track stuff. Um, and, and uh, what I use are 17 inch. Both, yeah, both of my both of my tires wheel sizes are 17s on this. So um, that 17 inch is a legit supermoto size. Okay, a lot of people put 12s on their bike, so they corner better. It 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 uh, turns in better or tips in better faster um, because the diameter of the wheel is smaller. That's why you know that's why you go from a 21 to a 17. It lets it 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 shortens your rake. It makes your rake less, so your your rate yeah your rake is less, so your bike turns in super fast. It also makes your bike unstable though, okay? <laughs> so um, because it basically it shortens your wheelbase a little bit, sort of kind of. Um, so so yeah, I raced that those two dudes. Uh, they were like from Nevada too. Um, they they were cool guys. I wound up racing them like the whole weekend. <laughs> and one of his name one of the names was Colin. I forget what the other dude's name. He had the green bike. It looked like a Kawasaki. I thought it was a KLX 110 at first, but yeah, they were both 125s. Um, and and then there was ha oh there was Zach Mazada, and there was Hawk Mazada. Okay, Zach Mazada is like a Hawk's brother or something, and I think he was racing a TT 125 with like trials tires on it. It was kind of weird. It was like a sportsman setup, is what it was. That's what you would call that. Um, it's basically a dirt wheels with like kind of streety kind of wheel tires for them, you know, like a trials tire. Trials tire is great for doing track days and stuff too. And and the good thing is they're they, they're decent in the dirt, you know, better than these in the dirt. So so but at you know I knew I raced the one TT one two five last year. A girl in the one TT two uh in, in on that track I drag raced her because like we were on the straight at the same time and then I was like all right here we go. And that's when the bike was like stock still. It has that still had the stock controller and battery. So, so I knew like, oh dude, I'm just gonna whip up on that bike because <laughs> I, I I definitely knew it was faster than that bike. Um, but yeah, so the the green flag comes up and boom, I whole shot him. Like I the, the I'll tell you this, all the drag racing that Hayes Mega has been practicing this year has finally paid off. So why does drag racing help? 
to get the whole shot. So what does it do? It helps your reaction time. So you know when the green flag goes up, boom, you go. And then it also teaches you how to launch your bike. So I knew how to launch my bike. So the way I launched this bike, I don't use the region throttle anymore, but <laughs> um, I put my weight down on the front. I kind of, yeah, I kind of just put my weight down on the front of, of the bike and I let my right leg dangle. And then, and then I get on the throttle a little bit and I, until I could kind of feel the bike wanting to move and, and I'm holding the, the front brake so it doesn't go anywhere. Kind of like if you're trying to do a burnout or something, you know? And then, um, and then when the flag goes up, boom, I drop the brake and twist the throttle and then off I go. And, uh, and then uh, if the front comes up, I keep my leg out so I can ride out the wheelie so the front doesn't come up. Uh, but if, the, if, it stays, if it stays on the ground, I hop on the pegs right away and I ride it. So that's that's the technique that Hayes Omega has learned to launch this bike. Now it might be different for other bikes, okay? So so not, what works for me might not work for you, okay? But that that's what works for, for Hayes Omega and this setup, okay? And and yeah, I whole shotted everyone. Like and I'm telling you, people were like amazed at how fast this bike was and it just destroyed people in the takeoffs. They had never seen like an electric bike at any of these kind of races before at least the mini races, and they were just, I just blew their minds. <laughs> like, I got so many comments, and they had a commentator, too, a P, there was a dude on a PA, and he was like, and, and he said, like, yeah, man, we just called your number all the time, like, 277, 277, 277. The guy on the electric bike on the 277, and people couldn't believe this thing that looks like a bicycle is just, like, owning all the bikes. So, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, those one two fives, there were kind of there were uh, all the bikes that I raced. There were no match for this thing in power. Okay, so it, I mean this thing is about as fast as this bike. Okay, and uh, so it's definitely faster than a one two five. And then I found out later, or is this a small? Well, no, nah, I'm not gonna spoil it for later. So yeah, anyway, I I won that race, um, but. Hawk Mazzotta didn't show up for that heat race because he races like freaking like six, almost literally almost all the classes. So, so like some, he won't show up to the heat race. So he doesn't, you know, tire himself out. Okay. And then I, I'm going to go, I might, might as well just go through the next race. So next race comes along. I know it's, it's super hot and I'm tired already. You know, I did the practice and then I, I've been racing these two bikes, you know? Um, so I won the first heat race. I got, I got number one. Okay. And then, so the second, uh, the main event comes, and I ra we race this bike, and it's eight laps. So I can definitely feel by like, uh, by after like nine or ten minutes, this bike it overheats and it slows. It, it you can notice it slows down, and you're running. You might be learning low on charge. I I think it's just the over the charger the, the um, the the controller overheating. It's thermal cutback. Um, something is getting too hot. I don't have time to check check that while I'm racing. So, <laughs> but anyway, oh okay, yeah, yeah. So we're racing, racing, racing. I'm ahead of everybody, and then and then like yeah, we're going boom. And like we're I'm like on lap seven, and and like the last couple laps, I've I've been hearing something. I can't see what's behind me, but I can hear what's behind me, and I can hear there's a bike behind me, and and then like every lap, every lap it gets a little louder. It gets a little closer every lap. And then uh, I I don't must have messed up or I maybe okay I'm not gonna lie um, during the race Hayes Omega thought it was like man I must be so far ahead of everybody I don't really need to try so hard so so I probably was doing about like ninety or eighty percent I wasn't going like balls to the walls because I knew like if I crash if I'm pushing it really hard and I crash then that's it your race is done you know unless you can get up really quick and make a comeback you know I didn't want to I didn't want to experiment with that. <laughs> so so uh, so I don't know I must have messed up somewhere um, I have to check the video but Hawk passes me okay Hawk passes me and I finally see this bike that's behind me like the whole time and and uh, and it's Hawk on a Honda XR100 with freaking like uh, with, with like the, the sportsman setup the dirt wheels and everything but it had like it has some kind of like 3d tires but it's an XR100. It had like freaking drum brakes on it, man. I'm like, uh, I, I, I didn't know that until after the race. But, but I all I can tell you, man, it was a work of art watching him ride on the track in front of me. I was like, he would come into the corners and he wouldn't slow down. 
he would just go sideways into the corners. Uh, it would be like drifting through all the corners, and, you know, he did slow down. It was like, you know, like how rally racer styles is, right? It's like, you know, you don't, you don't use your brakes to slow down before the corner. You just pitch the bike, and then you... you you go, you drifted in the corner. That's how you slow down. <laughs> so that's how the dude rode, man. He knows how to slide that bike. He knew, he rode it very well. Okay, so, and he beat me. Unfortunately, I could not catch up to him. Um, he was. Uh, I was trying to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so by by the time we got to the end of the eighth lap, um, I think he passed me on the seventh lap, and then I was kind of like, I was I was on his tail for a while. Then he started pulling on me. And then, um, yeah, by the time I, I was going to try to make a comeback, because he was like, he was about five bike lengths in front of me. And I think if I had one more lap, I might have been able to catch him. I don't know if I would have been able to pass him. But, but like, I got more power, so it makes me easy, easy, it makes it easier for me to pass him. So, um, especially on the straight. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, he won. <laughs> That's all I can say. He won. He was five bike lengths ahead of me. If I had one more lap, I might have been able to fight fight with them one more time. But yeah, he, uh, he he's he's the real deal, man. That's that's an example of a better rider on a not so not as good machine, okay? <laughs> Where versus somebody on like a more a, a better machine, like it's faster, you know. It has freaking disc brakes. The the other one had drum brakes, man. He didn't use the brakes. That's why <laughs> he didn't no braking. That's what that's the way he ride he rode that bike, man. And, and he owned me, okay? I could not believe it. And I found out it was an XR100 later. I was like, oh, you got beat by an XR100, dude? That's a, that's a kid's bike. <laughs> Look at this. It's not a very fast... Now, granted, XR100s, you can do a lot of things to XR100. There's a lot of modifications you can do. Now. But I looked at it, I'm like... I looked at it later, I'm like, dude, that this it's only got, like, a couple modifications. It just has enough modifications to get it on the track. That's about it, you know? I was like, oh, dude, you you just got owned by Hawk. <laughs> so so that was it for this. I got the second place, one of the second place trophies for GPC that for that day. Okay, and then so the GPB race rolls around. Hawk didn't race that one. Uh, uh, um, Zach Mazota um, uh, raced that one. That was his brother. So he's um, he's not as fast as his brother. So I I beat them all. <laughs> okay, and and you know what the funny thing is? I raced the same dudes in GPC. Uh, I, I read this. I raced the same dudes that were in the GPC class in the GPB class. Okay, there was only like four of us, so it was guaranteed if you didn't come in last, you would come home with the trophy. So that, that's good. Everyone wins, you know. That's that's nice. Um, uh, and uh, and I got first place. <laughs> so so yes, uh, Hawk Mazzotto didn't didn't race in that one. So that I'm pretty sure he would have beat me if uh, if I was running this one. You know. All right, so yeah, that was the first day of racing. Uh, we, I didn't have any. We, yeah, we didn't have any mishaps on any of the bikes. Um, um, I, I did really good on the first day. It was all asphalt, you know, and and I was leaning the bike more. By the end of the day, I was getting really comfortable riding both bikes. So, um, and and the light B was the really the star of the show, man. People couldn't believe how fast this thing is. This thing's a beast, man. I'm telling you, people were afraid to race it. it that's how fast it was. I'm telling you. They were calling it, calling it like a cheater bike, you know? <laughs> so, so I don't know, whatever, man. Hey, I dumped a lot of money into this bike to make it fast, you know? And, and it's not my fault they don't have, like, classifications for, like, electric bikes, you know? There's just not, not enough electric bikes out there, so I got to race with the gas bikes, so. But, hey, it's, I, I own the gas bikes, you know? So, <laughs> um, well, I, well, as you can see, I never got a first place on this bike, so. Uh, 